Hello, you're listening to the broadcast from the New Beginning Worship Center in Greenback, Tennessee. We're located on Highway 411, just three buildings from the intersection of Highways 411 and 95. Our email address is simply our initials, followed by the word mailbox at gmail.com, which is nbwcmailbox at gmail.com. We meet Sundays for teaching at 10 a.m., followed by worship services at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. We also meet midweek at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. Brother Marcus Severance is a pastor. Now, let's listen in to the message. I got a really good message tonight from the Lord, a really good one for our church. And You know, I'm amazed that you just can't ever out... There's no way to, 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 to even comprehend God's knowledge, uh, the, how He can give you things that just blows you away. So I just want to stop for even preaching. I want to give him all the credit, all the glory, all the honor for this word tonight. Amen. Will you stretch your hands this way? Father, I want to thank you tonight, God, for your word, your promise. God, I thank you, Lord, that you're building our faith tonight. I thank you, Lord, you, you've been speaking a lot about our walk, our faith. And God, I want to praise you now for this church, this body of believers. And God, we ask you now tonight to anoint this word. God, anoint this word, God. Lord, I pray, God, right now, in the name of your Son, Jesus, that you'll come down, Holy Spirit, that you'll pour out your anointing upon this body, upon our spirits tonight, God. I pray you'd uplift us and encourage us and strengthen everyone here tonight. And the people of God said, Amen. St. Mark, you may be seated, chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. We'll give everybody time to turn there. There's the Gospel of St. Mark, the second chapter. Man, this is a good word tonight, church. I, I, I thank God. I really do. St. Mark, chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. Everybody has it. Look up for that. I'm wait on him. My wife used to always tell me when I was a lot younger, I'd just get in the word and but she used to get so mad at me. Remember when I first got this start preaching, people said, where is he? Where is he going? What's he doing? So I'm trying to slow down a little bit and give everybody time to find it. So if I'm giving you time to find it, you better find it because I'm ready to preach it. Amen. All right. Let's read this. St. Mark chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. And again he entered into Capernaum after some days. And it was noise that he was in the house. Do you have the effect on people? Is it noise that he's in your house? Is it noise the broad that, that God is alive in you? He's alive in me. It was noise that he was in the house. It says, And straightway many were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them says in verse 3, And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. Look at here. There was four of them. So we're going, I'm going to show you something. Very, very good word. I thank God. I, I wish I could preach it right now, but I, gotta, I, gotta, I want to go ahead and lay the groundwork. Which was born of four. Verse 4, And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. Verse 5, When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Why did this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason you things in your hearts? Whether it is easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and take up thy bed and walk. But, they, but that you may know, verse 10, that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. He saith to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise and take up thy bed, and go thy way into thine house. 
And immediately he arose, took up his bed, and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed, and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. We never saw it on this fashion. Tonight I want to focus on something that I've never preached on before. And I want to title this message, Now These Are the Kinds of Friends That You and I Need. Now These Are the Kinds of Friends That You and I Need. The story is, is, is an incredible story because to begin with, Jesus was there doing a work and a lot of the people that were there that were blocking the way, they weren't there to hear the gospel preached. They were there to hinder the gospel or they were there to reason among themselves because it says right here that the scribes and Pharisees were there but yet there was these four friends of this palsy, this man that couldn't help himself. I want to say that, that I want to call these people uh, like stretcher people. These are people that, 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 that would go so far as, as to bear people, to bring people, to help people where they can't really help themselves. Somebody say amen. But the key to this particular passage of scripture even though the four friends were there the key was is that Jesus was in the house and the gospel the word of God was being preached somebody say amen the scripture says that these four friends when they their heart was simply to help this man this whole context of scripture was something that happened that was completely different than what they thought was going to take place. They said that within themselves, I believe if I can get this man to Jesus, and all they wanted to do, they, wanted, they didn't think about anything else. All they wanted to do was get him to Jesus so he could walk. But this is not what happened in this story at all. Because the whole context of the message wasn't the fact that he walked, which he did at the end, but it was what Jesus said to him first that matters, but I'm going to get there. But listen. So there, there are four friends that work with your faith. This is what I want to talk about. The Bible tells us without, without any hesitation that these men had faith because Jesus, he didn't look at the man that was sick of the palsy, which I've heard preachers preach. That's not what he said. No, he didn't commend that man's faith at all. He commended the people that lured him through the roof. You know, I don't know what kind of roof they had. Maybe it was a straw roof, mud roof, mud and straw, but I do know this, that they said to them within themselves, their faith said, I would rather have a temporal loss than an eternal loss. Or in other words, I would rather have a temporal loss for an eternal benefit. Amen. This was what faith says in our life. If I'm going to give up something, if I'm going to give up something, I'm not going to give it up for God. I'm not going to give it up for my faith. If I'm going to give up something, I'm going to give up the world. Come on. I'm going to give up the temporal, and I'm going to receive, even if it causes me to lose something in the natural, I'm going to receive it. Come on, somebody, in the, in, in the spiritual. My God, that's good. Somebody say amen. But there are four friends that are working with your faith. These are the four friends that I want to talk about. The first friend, his name is Persistence. They said within themselves, though we can't get in through the front door, though the press, they said that we will not Take no for an answer. Are you that way? Oh, come on, somebody. Are you that way? When, when the door's shut and locked and it says you can't come in and it says there's no way you're going to be able to get this, does your faith say, the friend of your faith, I should say, says, I'm going to be persistent. 
I'm going to climb up on the roof. I'm going to begin to tear the roof off, praise God, if that's what it takes to get to Jesus. Somebody, if you don't help me preach, I'll help you preach in this place. I'm going to get to him, whatever I've got. The first friend of your faith is called persistence. Now, number two, the second friend is called cooperation. Come on. They weren't one side of the church against the other side of the church. Oh, hello. Hello. Come on. You know, wasn't one church against another church or one denomination against that was called cooperation. They had one mindset, one goal. They were unified, and they wanted to do one thing. They said cooperation says we're all going to work together because it's not about us anyway. We're going to work together to get the one saved. Jesus said, I left the 99, and I went and found the one. His name that works with faith, the first friend is persistent. Thank you, Lord. And the second one is cooperation. I didn't say operation. I said cooperation, which means there's more than one person. Let me tell you right now, there's more than one of us in this church. It ain't about nobody. It ain't about the preacher. It's about Jesus. But it's, it is about the body. Jesus said, you're my hands, you're my feet, you're my legs, you're my, you know, you're my mouthpiece. And, and, but, but cooperation is one of the keys that took place. Because you know what? They all lifted him up. They all tore the roof off. They all lowered him down. And Jesus looked at them and he commended all of them, not one of them. Yes, bless God, I was on the roof. Let me tell the story about that day. I was there. It was me. I was up there. It, it, was, all, it was all me. Yeah, I was up there preaching. I was up there doing it all. Come on, this way people are. Yes, since I'm the Grand Reverend Belder Bishop Pooh Paul of the fourth potentate of the Grand Rods of the fourth bishop of, of the of the New York Jets. It's all about me. No, there was everybody was there. Everybody was working together. You might have been the first one on the roof, but it took everybody. You might have been the first one that had the microphone in your hand, but it took everybody. You, it, took, it takes everybody to make a church strong. It takes everybody in the church is important to God. That's what I'm trying to show you. I'm talking to some people in here. It takes cooperation. That's good preaching right there. That's good preaching. It takes cooperation to make something work. Faith says I'm going to be persistent. Praise God. Say praise God. Hallelujah. Faith says I'm going to be persistent. The friend, she's all right. She's okay. She's back here with the preacher. Faith says I'm going to, I'm going to cooperate. And number three, the, the, the third friend of faith is called compassion. Well, bless God. It don't matter that that guy's laying there on the road. It doesn't matter to me what happens to that person. Yeah, it does. Because it matters to God. So if it matters to God, it should matter to us. But let's look, look at this way. They had compassion. They, they didn't care. They didn't go there to see the Pharisees or the scribes. They, weren't, they didn't go there to even to see, the, see but one person. They went there to find Jesus. Amen. And that's the way you and I, that's the key to having compassion. When you have Jesus in your life, the third friend of faith is called compassion. And when you have compassion in your life, and let me tell you the difference between sympathy and compassion. Sympathy will kill you. And compassion, compassion can be hard. Sometimes compassion can be tough. Because Jesus had compassion on this man, but he looked at the man and he, and he basically he said, you know, your sins be forgiven you. That's when he got them all tore up. That's when they all began to get ecstatic and get mad and get upset. Amen. Say amen, Junior. Amen. They, 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 they got upset. But I want you to remember this one. The fourth friend of your faith is its originality. Now, I've looked all through the Scriptures all my life, and I've never ever in my whole life ever, ever seen anything done this is an original. This has never been done since or before that I know of. 
It was such an incredible act of their faith. It was such an original. It was. It was.